The sermon for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 1 to 45. The sermon is entitled, The Lord of Life. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now another week has gone by during this time of COVID-19. And another week of thoughtful and wise preparations that the professionals, the doctors have given us to do in order to protect ourselves and those that live around us. I know for all of us, well, I know me, Chris, and Jeff are here, but for all of you at home right now, yes, it's one of those things that we're trying to do as we love our neighbor, as we work together as a community to limit the spread of the virus. We're in this together, of course. And there are many steps that we ought to take. For example, washing our hands and having proper hygiene is a good measure, along with keeping your fingers out of your mouth, six feet of distance between one another, limiting your trips outside the house to only essential things, having hand sanitizer near you at all times and after coming home, leaving your shoes outside, taking off your clothes immediately, maybe even taking a shower just to be safe, the checklist is endless. I know you're saying, why am I talking so fast, right? Because the checklist seemingly is endless in our minds as it runs so fast, right? Back and forth, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? And it, it's frantic. So many things we do. I know I was at Target the other day and and we noticed that uh, the, pro the precautions they were taking as well, the, we were waiting in line and, and the cashier would literally disinfect the whole conveyor belt, right? Um, it would rotate and move and she would be using disinfectant on all the conveyor belt and it would, as it would rotate. She would clean the credit card machine after every customer, clean the little countertop where you put your checkbook, right? Uh, and squares indicating on the ground where we have to stand in line six feet apart as we're waiting to be checked out. Six feet apart, of course, right? And even now, I, I know um, uh, Jeff put this thing online about um, what we have to do with our groceries when they come home. Um, cleaning the vegetables really well, along with throwing out all the cardboard of the cereal boxes, limiting our exposure to any type of, uh, of, of disease, uh, wiping down all the boxes and wiping down all the bags, having this line of demarcation from clean and dirty. Um, I mean, again, it, as I look at all these things, it's a constant reminder of how, how we are uh, carefully preparing uh, to preserve the temporal life that we have, right? And that's the, the state that we are living in right now. But speaking of life, for Israel, in Ezekiel 37, it was a life held under the Babylonian captivity. They were captive. They were held. It seemed all was lost for the people. There was no hope. And there the Lord brought Elijah out to the valley of the dry bones. The Spirit led him dry and dead bones. Dry and dead bones. Dry and dead bones. In other words, they could not make themselves alive. They could not rescue themselves from this hopeless despair, even unto death. But the Lord asked the prophet Ezekiel, I love this verse right here. Can these bones live? Ezekiel answered, O oh Lord, you know. Because, of course, he is our Lord. The one who told Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And there with the word, Ezekiel prophesied. The bones rattled, the skin covered the bones, and they were brought to life. 
The Lord gives them the promise. And you will know that I am the Lord when I will open your graves and raise you, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you into your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, I will do it, declares the Lord. Again, because he is the I am, because he is the Lord, he says, I have spoken and I will do it. This is a promise. And the Lord follows through, of course, because he is Lord, right? Soon after King Cyrus of Persia defeated the Babylonians in 539 BC, and soon thereafter, the Jews returned to their land. Again, our Old Testament texts in the valley of the dry bones, the Lord giving life, points us to who our Lord is as the Lord of life. Life comes from the Lord. He gives life to Adam as the Lord breathes life into him. The Lord gives you life as he creates each and every one of you fearfully and wonderfully made you are. What a blessing that is. And here in Ezekiel 37, yes, by the very word of God, hear the word of the Lord, O bones, dry bones, dead bones, and you will live. The Word, the Lord of life. Again, speaking of life, there was Lazarus in our New Testament gospel texts who had been dead for four days. The odor was setting in. The smell of death was indeed there in the midst of his sisters Mary and Martha. And all they could say to the Lord was, if you had been here, a brother would not have died. The sobering reality in all this is that death is a part of everyone's life. It is. There's no way around it. And how magnifying it is in our time that we live in right now. Mortality seems to be at our doorstep. And for the world, death is one of great fear and terror. And the world will do its best as they try to preserve their life in the midst of death. I think St. Paul, as we are reading this morning in our texts, he says this, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. And that's what we're dealing with in these times. What are we setting our minds on? Is it on the flesh or in the Spirit? Now the flesh, again, as we see the world, setting their minds on the best way they could preserve their life in the midst of the temporary nature that we are living in, doing all they can to save this life. And of course, we are called to preserve life and care for life. But that is the subtle deception, isn't it? To focus on life as if we are the lords of this life. Now, due to the fall, we very well know that Scripture tells us, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. The fact is, ever since the fall, we, we cannot rid ourselves of, sin, of this sin problem. No matter how many treatments, no matter how many remedies, no matter how many vaccine shots that we take, this reality of death is still there because of the fall. We cannot dig ourselves out of this grave. No matter how good we think we have been, no matter how much we have done in our deeds of good work, nothing in ourselves can preserve or save or rescue us from this spiritual problem of sin and death. And for Mary and Martha, there was 
There's no way around the stench, the odor of their brother's death. The smell pointed to the reality that their brother was dead. No way could he escape the grave in this time and place. And so sad they were that only if they had been there earlier, or Jesus would have been there earlier, their brother would still be there with them. It's interesting, our view of life in this time and place. Honestly, I think for all of us, it's easy to put the blinders on, to become tunnel visioned by all the statistics, the projections, the graphs, so many reports. You turn on the TV, it's there, right? Every analysis we find. So many causes of concern, who to believe, what to believe. This report says this, that report says that. And yes, take all the precautions. Is that what we're called to do? Yes. We should take great caution. We should listen to the authorities. We should listen to our government and their recommendations. But I think on that path, I think the subtle, that, that, that small and creeping in deception is of the flesh. How our flesh can become the Lord of life, right? How quickly these precautionary measures become our only source of peace. How quickly, become, how quickly they become our refuge. How they become our fortresses. And though we start innocently taking care of ourselves and those around us, in the same breath, how quickly we forget who our true Lord is. That rather than hoarding more stuff, as if this, as this is our life, we ought to go to God's word, reside in his word. Now is the time to look to God's word. Because as he does with the dry bones, hear these words and you will live, breathing life into you. This is your life, my friends. I think as I went through this week for myself, watching carefully, observing the world, even staring at myself and my own sinfulness, how quickly we can get caught up in all this. We can. Uh, we become the lords of our own life. We need to figure this out ourselves. What if this? What if that? The Dow Jones is going down. The recession is coming. What's going to happen? Panicking, wondering, what's going to be? Uh, what can I touch? Who can I be around? How many feet? Is that four feet, six feet, eight feet? I mean, we're constantly... But it's a slippery slope, isn't it? Because there we find ourselves. We catch ourselves. As we become the lords, the little lords of our own life all the meanwhile forsaking the first commandment, remembering who our true Lord is. See, as for Mary and Martha, they see death, and of course there is grief. I mean, we all grieve in the face of death. And Jesus was there weeping as well. He was deeply moved. Remember who this Jesus is. He came to the tomb and said, take away the stone. But Lord, he has been dead. Jesus replied, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? I believe that's verse 4, right when he says that first. And as they took away the stone, Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, unbind him and let him go. And yes, by his word, there in the cloud of deathly odor, there Jesus the Christ, the Lord declares, he speaks and he does. Because he is the Lord. Can these dry bones live? Lord, you know, then you shall know that I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Genesis 3.15, from the offspring of a woman will come the Savior 
of the world. The Lord speaks. The Lord does. The incarnation, the word made flesh, Christ in flesh to us. The Lord speaks. The Lord does. Destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up again. The Lord speaks. The Lord does. O oh Lord, you know the words of the prophet Ezekiel. Your words, my friends. And the Lord does know he is God. And God knows that his will for you is Jesus. This is your Lord, uppercase L. The one who loves you who sacrifices for each and every one of you, who by his merciful care, his love, that he would give you the greatest and most gracious physician, Jesus Christ, the Lord of life, who heals your every wound, who is your remedy from sin, every guilt, every sorrow, every grief, better than any vaccination or cure this world can provide. There Jesus goes to be your great physician, and that can only be given by standing in your place at the cross, shedding his body and blood, taking the curse on himself. This is your Lord uppercase L, the suffering servant who gives you salvation, who provides for you his death and resurrection, handing you the keys of life by his hands pierced on the cross. The keys to eternal life are given there as from his blood covering you flows life. This is your Lord, the one who endures for you to provide for you, making his way into this world, his grace, only to deliver you the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation. And in the midst of what you hear, my friends, the high anxiety on the airwaves, the stressful static of riddled fears on the local radio, here we are together. Oh, Lord, you know, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, and I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And you shall, and you do. Jesus says, because I live, you shall also live because he is the Lord of life. Jesus finished what he had finally endured on the cross there at Calvary. And there three days later, the grave opened victorious. There we find our Lord resurrected where he delivered you from the greatest disease, from sin and death, where death has lost its sting and where eternal life is yours. No longer condemned. Death is no longer our end point. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Lazarus, come out, unbind him and let him go. O oh, dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. You are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism saves you. Baptism connects you to the Lord's death and resurrection. Baptism washes away your sins, O oh, dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Take and eat, take and drink. The medicine of immortality, his body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Christ's own body and blood given to you. The gift of life. And in, when, in with and under this bread and wine, Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Hear these words, my friends, because our good and gracious Lord has given you these very words. The words that open up the eternal condemning grave. The words that destroy death altogether, conquering the devil and his work and giving you the resurrection and the life. Because this is your Lord. He speaks and he does. He opens a grave for you, forgiving you, setting you free, delivering you life in his name. No one else can give you this life. We can try to protect ourselves to, to preserve this life in all that we do. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's only Jesus. It'll always only be Jesus. His word that gives you life. And yes, there will be the day when he returns, the tombs will shake and the bodies will rise because he is Lord. He speaks, he does, and there he gives you life. All in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.